Stick around to discover numerous specific details that will amaze you about replacing a bathroom sink. Before you start, double check all the pots in your sink and faucet kit. Make sure everything is there and in good condition. Turn the shut off valves clockwise. When they are perpendicular to the pipe, they are off. Turn on the water faucet to get out any trapped water. There won't be much water left. You just need the towel and a small bowl. If you can loosen the pipes by hand, do so. Now it's time to remove any clamps holding the sink onto the countertop. Unscrew and remove the clavis strap from the lift and pivot rods. Now lift out the whole faucet. Let's remove the pivot rod and unscrew the slip knot from the P-trap to free the sink. When cutting the old sealer and grout off, ensure you don't damage the countertop, especially if it's laminate. Carefully work around it a couple of times with a utility knife or all-in-one paint tool. I just finished installing the first sink in this classroom, which was my first time doing it. Now I'm tackling the second sink and I thought I'd record the process for you all. You might be wondering why I am replacing this sink, given that it's in good condition. The main reason is to match the previous sink I had to replace. Having two different styles made the bathroom feel less cohesive. Additionally, it provided an opportunity to record my work. Due to the narrow spaces, we had to record vertically to better show you the details. A lot of effort went into making this video. I hope you'll consider sharing it and subscribing to support us. Let's move on. As you can see, I'm using the blade itself to remove the residue, but you can use a cleaning material if you prefer. Cover the water lines to protect them from debris while you are working. Before installing, test the sink to ensure it's the correct size. Similarly, try out the faucet to ensure it fits properly. It's best to install the faucet before placing the sink. Otherwise, you'll end up having to screw everything on underneath the sink, which is a headache. As you can see, I put the sink in backwards to make installing the faucet easier. First, place the rubber gasket, then position the faucet on the sink with the rubber downwards facing the sink. Before tightening, ensure it's center.
Tighten the faucet knot until it's snug. If your hoses are not connected to the faucet, make sure to attach them before installation. Now it's time to put the lift rod in place. Ideally, it's best to hand tighten the knot. This prevents it from snapping. I carefully use the tool that came with the faucet to make sure it's secure. Next, we are going to install the drain stopper. Don't take the film of the flange until everything is done. That protects the flange from scratches and damage. Check the manufacturer's instructions to see if you need to use plumber's putty or 100% pure clear silicone instead. Plumber's putty can cause cracks in some plastics. If you are using plumber's putty, Roll it into a narrow line. You can form it outside of the flange or around the drain hole in the sink. If you are using silicone, feed a line around the flange edge and remove the excess right away. Read the silicone's instructions to know how long to wait before running water over it. It's normally half an hour. The key point here is Teflon. Since the flange tightens clockwise, in order to reinforce, wrap the Teflon tape clockwise around the top of the drain pipe. Make sure to always use Teflon tape on these threads where it meets the flange and below the weeping holes. For the bottom threads, wrap it tightly counterclockwise. Do not use plumber's putty because it is petroleum based, so it will cause the rubber to get brittle and cracked. This is the overflow drain. If your sink is filling up, water flows through a channel and goes through these weeping holes on the drain pipe. Water can easily leak through these if the threads are not sealed properly. Tighten the drain pipe onto the flange. Make sure the pivot hole is facing back to where your faucet will be. Tighten the nut to compress the rubber washer and hold the pipes in place. You can see that it's compressing the plumber's putty. Make sure the washer is on the right spot. Don't over tighten and clean the excess plumber's putty at the end. If you are strong enough, hand tighten the slip knot. If you feel it's still loose, it's best to ensure it's secure by using a tool rather than letting it leak. When I hand tighten the slip knot in the previous thing, it leaked. My advice is to use water pump pliers and tighten it properly the first time.
to begin installing the pop-up mechanism, unscrew the pivot knob. Now let's prepare and install the clevis strap. Slide it onto the lift rod and tighten the clevis screw. The stopper has a hoop on it. Put it in with the hoop facing the pivot hole. This allows the rod to go into the hoop. Try to set the rod in the hoop. Tighten the knot by hand. Slide one end of the spring clip onto the pivot rod. Typically, the third hole of the clevis strap works best. Slide the other end of the clip in to secure it in place. Give it a try to see if it easily lifts up the stopper. Adjust the height of the lift rod using the clevis screw if needed. The faucet is now fully installed on the sink. Clean up any excess plumber's putty. Peel off the film from the flange and stopper. Lift the sink, rotate it, and carefully position it back on the counter. Make sure to align the pipes correctly. Using a pencil, trace the outside of the sink. Ensure the pencil is perpendicular to the counter all around. Lift the sink out carefully and keep it sideways in the box for now. Feed a line of sealer directly inside and on the pencil mark. Try to be precise. Slide the slip knot and washer onto the tailpiece before picking it up. Ensure the tailpiece properly goes into the trap and then lower the sink into place. Push down on the sink firmly to make sure it's stuck on properly. Using wipes or a rag, wipe up excess sealer, reapply and use your fingers to smoothen it. Hook up the water line, hand tighten them so you don't cross thread them. Cold water goes to the right and hot water goes to the left. Finish with a wrench but don't over tighten. Using the aerator key, 
remove the aerator to let out all the sediment in the manufacturing process. Make sure to run both hot and cold water. Don't forget to tighten the P-trap arm before tightening anything because here water travels upward and there is more chance for leaks. Make sure your P-trap has a slight downward slope. Before running any water, put a paper towel in the cabinet to easily see any leaks. To minimize splashing, open the faucet halfway and put a towel over it. Let it run for a few minutes, then reinstall the aerator. Check running cold water to see if there are any leaks. Check running hot water to see if there are any leaks. Look at every single nut. Luckily, I didn't see any leaks in this installation at all. Properly tightening the split knot is the key. Oh my God, I forgot to tighten this knot. Despite this, I didn't have any leaks. Fill the basin and lift the stopper. See if the sudden rush of water leads to any leaks. Luckily, no sign of leaks. Fill up the basin and check the overflow. Make sure to look at the pea trap and gasket. No leaks again. Your subscription means a lot to us. Thanks to your support. We can keep making videos for you. Please don't forget to like and share. Subscribe and stay with us to see more future videos from Life Experience. Thanks for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.